Now let's look at the data channels pop up. We press this button and now we see the selections for data channels. Let's review them. First of all we can choose one channel of EEG or two channels or the aux channel for auxiliary devices. Here's where we choose the filter order and this is the sharpness of the filter cutoff. Third is a faster response but a less selective filter, good for beginners. Sixth is a slower response but it's more selective and it's appropriate for advanced users. Then we have the sum channel mode which is normally turned off. When you turn it on the EEG channels are added together which is useful for certain types of synchrony chaining. We then have the amplitude scale. We offer two scales. One is peak to peak and the other is RMS uh, for root mean squared and peak to peak is more commonly used so we're going to use that. Then we have save EEG to disk which allows us to save the EEG waveform to the disk. You can turn this on if you want in order to record the EEG for your later review. However keep in mind that it will store a lot of information and files will get large. So for typical training purposes we'll leave that turned off. The artifact threshold is normally set to a high value of 240 microvolts. Uh, this could be lowered if you desire in order to reject more of a motion artifact or eye blink artifact. And the COM port is shown here again. We're on COM port 1, so we're going to leave that as it is. You'll also see on the bottom a button which allows us to access the electrodes screen. If we press this button, we're presented with a map of the 1020 electrodes and the ability to choose some. So we're going to choose these in the manner appropriate for what we want to do. We want C4 to be the active, and A2 to be the reference, and we want A1 to be the ground. We'll choose C4 off the list. For reference 1, we're going to choose A2 off the list for right-sided training. And then for the ground, we're going to find A1 and pick it off the list. So now we're training C4, active, reference 1 at A2 and a ground on A1 and we hit OK and that completes then the settings on the data channels pop up. Next we'll review the training protocol. This screen allows us to select the training protocol for each of the eight frequency bands delta, theta, alpha, low beta, beta, high beta, gamma and the user defined band. Any one of these three bands, or these eight bands, can be set in one of three conditions. Either go, which is normally an enhance, stop, which is normally an inhibit, or ignore, which is to ignore it. For this protocol, we see a stop on theta, as expected, because we're inhibiting theta. We see a go on low beta, as expected, and we also see a stop on high beta. In addition, the values typed into these boxes are the threshold values for beginning training. These are appropriate values for typical starting values and these came with the built-in protocol so we're going to leave them as is. It's possible to choose a protocol for channel 1 and a separate protocol for channel 2 when you're doing two channel training and by using this push button on the left and the right you choose between the channels and set the protocols correspondingly. In addition, we have an auto thresholding capability and the options are selected using this push button. When you use auto thresholding, you preset the percentages that you want the component to be over threshold and they're chosen as follows. For reward components, which are go, we pick a percentage of time over threshold. Typically 50 to 80 percent would be used. This one has 60. For the inhibits, such as theta, we give a percentage of time over threshold and these are typically between 20 and 50. In this case it's 20. There's a separate inhibit percent for a high beta and that's typically set at a much lower value because we're not really trying to downtrain it just to keep it from getting too large and in this case it's 10 percent. In this selector we choose whether auto thresholding is on or off. If auto thresholding is turned off then all threshold adjustments are done manually as in our previous software. When auto thresholding is turned on, there's a choice of when these thresholds will be updated. Auto thresholding basically means the computer finds new thresholds. 
Auto updating has to do with when those thresholds are automatically used for the next threshold. Auto update is an automatic function. You can either have it automatically update never, which means you'll only use manual updating using the Y key on the keyboard, or you can auto update after the pre baseline, and we'll talk about what baselines are. Or you can auto update before each run, and a run would typically be two, three, or maybe five minutes. And we'll leave it to auto update before each run. When you choose auto thresholding before each run, it becomes very automated and hands free, and we'll be demonstrating that type of operation. We now press OK, and then OK on the protocol box, and we see now in review the go is on low beta with a threshold of one, stop is on channel one theta, threshold of five, and a stop on high beta with a threshold of eight. Auto thresholding is on with the percentages 60, 20, and 10, and we're going to auto update before each run. Now let's review the frequency band settings. These set the corner frequencies for each of the eight filter bands. The standard filters we use are delta, theta, alpha, low beta, beta, high beta, gamma, and a user-defined band. These are the preset frequencies which are most commonly used, but these can be changed with a resolution of a half of a hertz. So for example, you could change delta 1.0 to 1.5. The standard frequencies are 1 to 3, theta is 4 to 7, alpha is 8 to 12. Low beta is 12 to 15, used for SMR. Beta is 15 to 20. High beta is 20 to 30. The gamma is 38 to 42. And the user-defined band is set at 30 to 35, just as a convenient starting point. So we'll use these settings. Now we'll review the display options. If you press the display options pop-up, you get a dialog which allows you on the left to choose the panels which are viewed. Panels are small windows in the main training screen and these can be changed at any time during training but this is a convenient starting point. For a typical protocol like we're using we would want to see the raw waveform which is the EEG, the filtered waveform, the thermometer boxes which are actually bar graph displays, and the brain mirror. Here it says using filters I'm going to choose the FFT, which is the Fast Fourier Transform. It gives a more detailed brain mirror view. And then on the right, you see we have the frequency bands which are viewed. This picks which components are going to be displayed. So we're going to look at the theta, the low beta, and the high beta. We could look at other components whether they're trained or not. For example, we could pick alpha here just to look at it, but we'll leave it off.